So we're going to talk about um, uh, the, the guilty truth, and I, I kind of got off on it because I had, I was talking to uh, someone, I was doing a Zoom with somebody else and talking to this uh, lady, and I can't remember where she lives now, I don't know, somewhere on the coast or something. And uh, she was asking me questions, doing an interview, and she asked something about guilt, and I started talking about it, and I watched her eyes flash and open and her mouth drop, and I realized how many people don't know very much about this. You that have been with us for years, a few of the things you've heard before, and I got some stuff I've never preached before, which I told her. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up, too, is guilt is a power that can sideline you pretty easily, like, you know, fear is a tormentor, but so is guilt. Guilt can torment you. You can have guilt uh, due to whatever, uh, and you'll get better understanding of that as I go, but even related to people that are not even alive. Guilt can affect people, in uh, even children. Children can be ridden with guilt, not even know maybe what it is, but guilt is something that starts early and stays late. And I remember when I was able to break that power off of me as I was searching how to really, really get in touch with God. And I had to uh, break free of a lot of my, I was going to call it theology, but it really wasn't that great a teaching, which I'm going to talk to you about, about guilt. So here, let me just tell you some scriptures. I, I printed them so it was fast. Ephesians 1, 7, just listen to the words. In him we have redemption. We're going to go over these words in a minute. Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Redemption, forgiveness are the two words I underline. 1 John 1, 9, a lot of people know there's important words. If we confess... I underline that. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So I wrote those down, important words, redemption, forgiveness, confess, forgive, unrighteousness. Okay, purify us. All right. Now, one time, it's been a long time ago, but uh, one time I was uh, asked uh, to attend a courtroom. I had to go to the courtroom uh, for somebody. They wanted me to come. I, I didn't really want to go, but I went. Okay, so I'm just sitting in the courtroom, and uh, this guy, he'd done something uh, years ago. He'd done something, and uh, they had a, it was a jury trial, so, you know, I showed up and sat there and all day, <laughs> and uh, I didn't have anything to do with it. I just sat there. The guy wanted me to come, you know. So anyway, uh, I knew the guy, and I knew that he'd done it. I knew he was guilty, you know, uh, kind of pastor privilege or something, I guess. But anyway, I knew he was guilty, and he'd done it. So he basically wanted me to just show up as support to see what happens. I guess he was hoping to get a light sentence or whatever. So I'm sitting there, and uh, so the trial's going on, and the family's there, and all the people, and what he did to what, who, when, everybody's there, you know. And um, so I'm sitting there, and uh, something happened. I can't remember. It's been a long time ago. I just kind of remember the generalized idea of general idea of it. Is something happened as it went along, and you've watched enough TV to see how it goes. And something happened, and there was some kind of a technicality. You know, somebody like somebody like a police officer or attorney or somebody or somebody did something that was not. And so, so a technicality came in. So they had to do it, and I knew he's guilty, and uh, the judge knew he's guilty, and uh, I think they had a jury there. The jury knew he's guilty. The family knew he's guilty, and guess what? The man knew he was guilty. Everybody sitting there knew he's guilty. We were basically there to see what was going to happen next, but due to a technicality, he got let go, and they found him not guilty of a technicality, you know? Even though I knew he's guilty, everybody, he knew he's guilty. Everybody knew he's guilty. And when they said not guilty and he got, got free on a technicality, guess what? I can look, you can just look at it. You can feel it in the room. The judge felt bad. The jury felt bad. The family felt bad. I felt bad. Okay, the guilty guy was a little happy. But what's he going to do with himself? Because he still knows he's guilty. I mean, even though it said not guilty, he's still guilty. Even though he felt glad that he got off, he's going to go away with, uh, you know, everybody's unhappy about this. So 
no way, even though they said not guilty, and he got to go, you know, get, get away with it, and everybody else felt bad, there's no way that he's really not guilty, right? If everybody knew he's guilty, even he knew he's guilty. So the problem is what? He is guilty, but instead it said not guilty. And not guilty on a guilty person doesn't feel right, does it? It didn't feel right in the courtroom. Nothing we could do about it. They do it about it. Us do, nothing you could do about it. Everybody left feeling bad, except, like I said, maybe the guilty man, would, which was still guilty. Okay. So when I re- was putting this together, I kind of remember that story and realized why sometimes I or others might be a little uncomfortable with this because Christianity as we see it today is sort of doing that to us. The, what they call theology is, is kind of teaching this, that the guilty are not guilty. Christianity kind of has a strong, it's a strong root of teaching. And I get it. I've been around enough to kind of get the tur- tossing and turning and this and that left and right on it. The guilty are not guilty. And they use words like I've used a minute ago, uh, forgiven, redeemed, justified, and then equals not guilty. It all sounds really good, can make a case for it. Theologically, spiritually, scripturally, they put all these pieces together. There's only one problem with it being in the ministry as many years as I've been in it. It sounds good, redeemed, forgiven, right? All these things, all these words. The only problem with it, I've been dealing with people for a long time, and after you throw all those words to them and all that theology and all that scripture, people still feel guilty. They didn't, the guilt didn't go away. Just like that man, you could say, not guilty. But he's going to walk out there knowing what? He's guilty. Right. And so I found that to be true, that people are still people, 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 multitudes of people very, very common, are dealing with guilt. All right? And you don't have to admit it or raise your hand. It doesn't matter. I just want to help you be free and help you understand how I did it because it's just so common. Okay? So we'll tear this apart just for a second because I read you a scripture that Jesus said what? Jesus said, you know the scripture, uh, these words, that he is, or John said this, that Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, right? And he gave us, and John gave us, here's the formula. He said, and you know what it is, if we do what? If we confess, confess our sins, right? Okay, okay. Now, in our religion, my religiousness, <laughs> when we hear that confess our sins, it kind of, okay, confess your sins. And we don't really let it lay into us. Because, you know, we live in a society where we don't want to really hear what's really being said. So, okay, we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And shoo, goes past us, and that's it. But really, let's knock it down to what it really says. Okay? Because what it's really saying is, he's faithful and just to forgive us if you confess your guilt. Am I right about that? That's what you're doing. I mean, okay, we make it sound so religious to confess your sin, which, okay, it's a sin. But really what you're doing is making this thing work (coughs) is you are confessing that you're guilty. So in order for forgiveness to work, you have to confess guilt. Is that right? It says he's faithful and just to forgive us. And I'll just put it in a word that you don't want to hear. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins if we confess we're guilty. That'll clear the room. Because as if you confess our sins, the religious part just goes right past. Oh, yeah, 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 I got that. But if we say, okay, um, you want to be saved, you have to confess you're a guilty person, then, whoa, I don't know if I want to do that. So, but that's what it says. In order, do you understand, in order for you to be forgiven, you have to confess you're guilty of something. You can't be forgiven of something if you didn't do anything. Obviously, If you're saying, forgive me, Lord, uh, you did something. If you did something, what are you? You're guilty. We just took that out of the religious vocabulary because we don't like it. 
But on the other hand, we took it out of our religious vocabulary, yet people are still dealing with guilt, but because we took it out of our vocabulary, they're not getting any help. So anyway, I want to try to help you today. So wait, before you can be forgiven, you have to be, though, something else. Another word I threw in. Before you can be forgiven, did you know there's another word I threw in? You have to be redeemed. Now, you may not know so much about the word redeemed. What is, you know, you may or may not. What does redeemed mean? So I thought I'd take it. There's another word that means exactly the same thing. So I thought for all you CSI criminal people that watch a lot of TV, those crime shows, I'd use a word you'd understand. It's the same word as ransom. You know that one, right? What happens? Somebody gets kidnapped. The FBI shows up, and then what? Did they leave a ransom note? What's that mean? What do they, what do they mean? A ransom note usually means what? How much money do they want? How much, how much money, money, money? How much money do they want to get this person back? Is that right? So ransom. Well, the same word ransom, and some of the Bibles even say ransom, <clears throat> That Jesus ransomed us, or he redeemed us. It means that, to, <clears throat> in, in ransom in the FBI terms, means usually money, but could be anything. But it means that uh, he redeemed us, and that he did something to get us back, or to get us, right? He redeemed us. And, of course, the Scripture says he redeemed us, <coughs> Or he ransomed us, not by money, but by his blood. As a society, as a people, as a culture, as, a, as, as through all, everybody in the universe, it says all have sinned, and so all needed to be paid for, and so he died for the sin of the world, right? And so he paid, he paid, and it's a legal term, he redeemed, he ransomed the whole world, who will believe in him, <coughs> with his blood. Everybody got that? If you have been ransomed or you have been redeemed, then you have been bought by his blood, right? If you have been bought by his blood, <coughs> you can be forgiven. So it says here, if we confess our sins, he's... Faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we have redemption through his blood, we have the forgiveness of sins, right? <clears throat> so, if you haven't been bought and you don't belong to him, then you can't ask him to forgive you your sins, right? So, we got to get the order here. <clears throat> so, you've been ransomed, redeemed, you've been bought by his blood. This is just basic theology. And then the people who have been bought by his blood can then, because of that event, be forgiven because he's the atonement. You can be forgiven of all your sins. Is that right? <clears throat> so that's how it happens. So redeemed, ransomed by his blood, now we can be forgiven legally. And the words, those redeemed and all those words, those, uh, God put those in there so we could understand it just like the courtroom, those are like legal terms. So when he says redeemed and all that, it's like Jesus legally, and sometimes you got to remember that, legally bought you with his blood. Okay? Legally bought you. So all who have sinned, but those who accept and believe and go through the system of the kingdom of God, Jesus has bought you and all humanity with his blood. Now, um, there's something we got to think, though, and then, and then we get forgive, forgiveness. And why do we get forgiveness? Because we are what? Guilty of something. All of sin, so we're all guilty of something. So then we can be redeemed, we've been bought, now we can be forgiven of whatever. Everybody that wants to. Okay? So now that's a pretty good system. I like it. I'm forgiven. Hey, I like this. I belong to him now and I'm forgiven because I have done something that I need to be forgiven for. 
Now what religion does is cheapen it a little bit because then it says, okay, now you've been redeemed, you've been bought, you have forgiveness, and then what God says is you're not guilty. Well then, if I'm not guilty, then the high price he paid is kind of a waste. Because now I'm thinking like, hey, I got off pretty easy. Wait a minute. It doesn't really say that in here. That's not, that's not what God intended you to think, and that's not what Paul intended you to think when he's talking about we're justified by faith or, or we're redeemed by the blood. He wasn't expecting people to go, whoopee. Boy, did I get off easy. But Christianity can't handle guilt, so it says <clears throat> what all this means is you're not guilty. What do you mean? I don't understand this. Jesus sacrificed with his blood, so the guilty are what? Not pronounced not guilty, but so the guilty will not be condemned because of their guilt. Is that right? Or condemned to death, really, because with sin comes what? Death. So the exact picture of the Bible is, hey, you who have sinned are now condemned to death. But Jesus, by his blood, took your place. He died so that you who have been condemned to death are no longer condemned to death. It doesn't say, now we're going to just say, hey, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't sin. You didn't, you're not guilty. No, it means you're not going to die. You are no longer condemned because of the blood of Jesus. And instead, you get to be set free. You get to go free. So through the blood of Jesus, we get this scripture, who the Son sets free is free indeed. It has nothing to do with guilt. It has to do with you were condemned, locked up, condemned, but the son came and did what? Set you free. And now you're free indeed. You have been bought with the blood. Now you can be forgiven. Got it? Now I've prayed this to lots of people around the world for so many, many years. And so you pray it and you give all this to them. And then you pray it with them. And then comes because of our culture and the terrible reputation, the terrible thing guilt has. Oh, we don't know what to do with it. And so you pray with them and you tell them all this stuff. And then they say the prayer. <coughs> and then right after you say the prayer, then they say something like this. But I still feel guilty. And I say, of course you do. You are guilty. You just said so a couple of minutes ago. Didn't you? Didn't I just hear you say a minute ago, two minutes ago, that you're guilty and you needed to be forgiven? Now we said this, we accepted all this theology, and you go, well, but I still feel guilty. Well, of course you do. Of course you do. You just said you were guilty. What we did was we took away the condemnation. We took away the death, and we now set a guilty person free. Whoopee. You get to go free. Jesus died. You don't have to. You get to go free. And the reason you get to go skipping along is because you would have been sentenced to death. And so the whole life, your whole life, you reflect on that with thanksgiving. I would have died. I would have been condemned to death, but this guilty person is enjoying life. Guilty people. The kingdom of God is not that we are declared not guilty because then you don't appreciate anything. The beauty of the kingdom of God is all guilty people get to go free. What love is that? He died with his blood so guilty people could walk out and go, wow, this is amazing. 
I did that. I've been forgiven. I have been redeemed. He bought me by his blood. And here I get to live. And I get to live in free indeed. I'm free. I thought I was going to the prison of hell. But now I am free indeed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so some people, then they want to take all that away as though now just, uh, you never were. And yet even Paul reflects on it. And he says, you know, I was the least of all the apostles because he looks back and he says, you know why? Because I persecuted Christians beforehand. He didn't say, oh, I'm not guilty. I didn't do that. I'm a new creation. I never did that. Yeah, he's a new creation, but he still can reflect on who he was and appreciate what he's become. That the guy who persecuted Christianity is now the preacher of Christianity. And he says, I've been set free. That's, that's it. I have been set free. So you guess what? As you have heard me, now the stuff you've heard, some of you have heard me say before, and I've written in books, is, and uh, other people may have said it. I've never heard it unless they heard it from me, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been said. So the person says to me, as you now would probably expect, the person says to me, but I still feel guilty. And you that have been with me know what's coming. And I'd say, well, here's your problem, right? I've been saying this ever since Bobby was in seventh, eighth grade <laughs> to her. Guilt is not a feeling. Guilt is a verdict. Right? I still feel guilty. Well, it doesn't matter whether you feel it or not. A person could be in court standing there before a judge who committed a terrible crime and stand there and says, I don't feel guilty. <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> we don't care how you feel. You either are or you ain't. Doesn't matter. You may not feel it. You may feel it. But you either are or you're not. So after I get done praying or talking or counseling or whatever, and you say, I still feel guilty. Well, what did you do? Why? So guilt is not a feeling, but guess what else? Joy is. Joy is a feeling. And the redeemed of the Lord then go in the joy of the Lord, knowing what's happened to them, not feeling guilt, but feeling joy. Because guilty people are now set free indeed. You're feeling the wrong thing. Because you don't understand what's happened. Feeling the wrong thing. It's a verdict. Joy is a feeling. We've been bought. We've been forgiven. We're free indeed. And what you're feeling is not a feeling. <laughs> what you say you're feeling, I feel guilt. No, 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 no. That's not what you're feeling. But what you should be feeling is a feeling. You should be feeling joy. You should be feeling love. You should be feeling uh, respect for Jesus and just honoring him. There's some feelings you should have, but guilt is not a feeling. And that's where everybody goes, you know, so many people go wrong. All right? So back to the basics, did you confess your sin? Then your guilt has been paid for, right? Well, what do you need to do? What's the problem then? I still feel good. What's the problem? You need some faith. Because the Bible says you have been justified by your faith. If you're still feeling guilty, then you don't have any faith that this system works. Justified by faith, that means you have been declared just and right with God. It doesn't mean you didn't do it. It doesn't mean that you're not guilty. It means that guilty people, God says, you're all right with me. You are right in my eyes. And we're not going to discuss your guilt. Okay? We're not going to discuss it because you are now, your guilt is now paid for. And I'm going to help you here understand where we're going wrong with this, as I go one more step now. Guilt has been paid for, and you have been, or your sin has been paid for. 
But let's just get rid of the notion that now all of a sudden we're going to spend the rest of our lives trying not to feel guilty. Okay? And what are we going to do about that? Because it's a, it is a terrible thing. So now we come to one conclusion that is in a, it is impossible for you to feel guilty. Because guilt is not a what? It's not a feeling. Go before any judge and talk about your feelings and he doesn't care. Or she doesn't care. Right? Who cares? It's not a feeling. Okay, you made some headway. So we're going to be free indeed today and we're going to lead, learn one more step and we're going to go to the guilty truth now about this. Sorry if I used mother in this. This is just the real example. I've had it many times, but I'll just use it as an example. It's nothing to do with anybody's mother. If just somebody came, I just, this was the example I thought of. It could have been anybody else, a different person. But a person said to me, every time, <laughs> oh boy, every time I get around my mother, I feel guilty. I don't know why I thought of that one, if it's just so common or what. Or you're going to get offended that I said mother or could have said father or anybody else. But that's the one that I thought of because I've heard it a lot, a lot of times. Nothing against anybody here, but that's what I've heard. So, it was a daughter, by the way, but that doesn't matter. It's common, but it doesn't matter. So, this daughter comes to me, and she says this. Now, I know what she wants. She wants some help, right? She's not expecting the help she's about to get, but she wants some help. I want to help you. You're probably not expecting the help that you're going to get, but I want to help you. So the daughter comes to me and she says, Pastor Steve, every time, and this is a grown up, already married, still hanging on it, you know. Every time I get around my mother, I feel guilty. And I said to her, really? What did you do? She said, nothing. But every time I get around my mother, I feel guilty. I said again, really? What terrible thing did you do to your mother? And she said, I told you already. I didn't do anything. Then I said to her, well, if you didn't do anything, then what you are feeling is not guilt. You see, she's trying to get rid of guilt that doesn't exist. So you're never going to get rid of it. So I said, what you are feeling is not guilt. Guilt is the result of doing something. I said, what did you do? In fact, I second time, like I said, what terrible thing did you do? What did you do to your mother? <laughs> I'm waiting to hear and how many people right now listen to me, whether daughter, son, or whoever, it could be, doesn't matter who, what relationship. How many people listen to me right now are struggling, trying to get rid of possibly years, like she was, years of guilt, but can't do it, and don't know why? And the reason is because you're not struggling with guilt. Guilt is the result of doing something. And if you truly didn't do something terrible, in her case to her mother, then what you are feeling is not guilt. Right, raise your hand if you heard it. I don't know if you got it, but did you hear it? If you didn't do anything to your poor mom, and every time you get around her you say, I feel guilty, then there's something wrong because guilt is the result of something you do. That's why you needed forgiveness before God. You committed sin. You can't say, every time I get around God, I feel guilty. What did you do? Nothing. What? It doesn't make sense, does it? Every time I get around my mother, I feel guilty. Well, what did you do to the poor woman? Nothing. Then what you're feeling is not guilt. 
So what you're trying to do is get rid of something that's not there. Light bulb goes on, music plays in your head, symphony starts, and angels applaud. Are you getting it? You don't have to know anything else besides that, but just wow. Wow. What? Yeah. Just think of it. Let it soak in for just a minute. People are dealing with guilt for years and years and years. And then you ask them, what did you do? They say nothing. Then what you're dealing with is not guilt. Maybe you did do something. Well, that's different. If I say then, what did you do to your poor old mom? And you tell me, you locked her up in the closet every Saturday night so you could sneak out. I'd say then there's some guilt there we need to deal with. But if you say, I didn't do anything, I just get around her and, she, and I feel guilt. So you go and we look at your life and you, mom or whatever, so, well, I'm just using mom as an example, but whatever, whatever. He said, I feel guilty. What did you do? He said, I didn't do anything. Then it's not guilt. Now, wait a minute. That doesn't mean that you're not feeling something. Okay, but what you're feeling and trying to get rid of that feeling is not guilt. So if it's not guilt and you're trying to get rid of guilt, you're never going to get rid of guilt because that's not what you got, right? Now, you may have something. You may look at your life and feel regret. It may be remorse. It might be disappointment it might be sadness it could be any number of things that you're feeling as you reflect back on your life and you need to figure out that oh that's what it is I'm disappointed my childhood and then my life isn't what I expected it to be so that's what I'm feeling and so when I get around my mother, the disappointment of life happens to me. But it's not guilt. And, then, and dealing with disappointment is a lot different than dealing with guilt. Guilt is dealt with by confessing guilt. Right? Confessing guilt. And he's faithful and just to forgive us as the redeemed of the Lord. And then we get the joy of guilty people going free, and we don't think about it anymore, even though we know we're guilty. So we're not trying to get rid of guilt. This has been my experience. Like everybody, especially when God began to deal with my life over and over, and things were happening in my life, and I wanted to blame other people like everybody else. I wanted to blame everybody else. And as God began, thankfully, to deal with me, about me, I began to realize my weaknesses. Maybe you too can do it. It was a lifesaver. Because I was so upset, I guess I'd use that word. Really, let's not say upset. I was so focused because some people had really done some things. This wasn't make-believe. Some people had really done some things. And I got so focused on what other people had done until God began to talk to me about how unfocused I was on anything that I had done. I was focused on their guilt, but I was totally merciful on mine. <laughs> and so God began to press on me in my prayer, in my life, press hard. I think now I didn't like it then, but he pressed on me. And every time I would try to bring up what they did and get him to understand, you know what I mean? Try to get him to understand me. He would press me and say, yeah, but you know what? 
I do understand you. Because every time I bring up you, you don't listen. You bring up them. And God would just like say, which is more important right now, them or you? I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to them. They're not even in the room. But you are. And you don't want to talk about you. You want to talk about them. And every time I would try to talk about them, he would switch. And I could tell, I don't even know if he was talking to me. It just feels like he was just glaring at me. Like, I see those eyes. They're your angry eyes, aren't they? You know, it's like he, and, and, and he says, you're, there's something wrong with you. You're focused on other people, and I can't get your attention about you. Well, it took a while, but I got it. I started getting it, because every time I would try that, he would come back at me, and all of a sudden I said, you know what? This is getting uncomfortable. I am more comfortable now sticking to the subject of me, because every time I go to them, you make me really uncomfortable. I'm feeling uncomfortable every time I think of somebody else. And I'm starting to be more comfortable now, which I wasn't at first, thinking about me. And the result then was a life changer that took just about a minute or two. It took a while to get there. But once I got there, it was a life changer, which I'm sharing with you in just a few minutes. And I remember, I didn't want anybody to hear me. I didn't want Kathy or anybody else in the house to hear me. So I said, I'm going to go pray. It was, I, you know, and so I went to the garage. So I knew nobody would be there. And they wouldn't go there. I stood by the garage door. I kept it closed. And for the first time in my life, I'm a Christian. I'm in the ministry. First time in my life, I accepted guilt and said, I am guilty. Guilty. I am guilty. Forget all those other people. They may be guilty too. I don't know. That's up to you, but I am guilty. And it is, the old song came to me. You know, it is me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I said, I'm guilty. Me, I'm guilty. Now, what are you going to do with me? For the first time, I was honest. You know, I was honest. I quit trying to not be guilty. You know, you spend your whole life trying to not be guilty, blame other people. And then out of the whole thing, try not to feel guilty. And you're just in turmoil all the time, trying to defend yourself, trying to, you know, figure out everything around everything. Why it wasn't my fault? Oh, it's not my fault. Ah, finally, <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, I'm just done. I was. I'm just done. I'm done with life. I'm done with defenses. I'm done with blame. I'm done with everything. I'm just going to stand here. I'm a guilty person. I'm guilty. I'm stupid. You know, I don't know what you're going to do with me. You know what happened? Seriously, for the first time in my life, I felt God's love. What? I'm not, I'm, I'm telling you the truth. You see, because I thought I had to do all that other stuff to be lovable. And I felt God's love because <laughs> I, was, I, I gave in to the inevitable. I said, I'm guilty. And I felt God's love and I realized, so this is what it is. Guilty people are loved and set free. And that's the joy. Jesus lets guilty people go free. And he loves them. And he uses them, right? He loves them and uses them. And you don't have to go like, I'm not guilty. It's not my fault. It's da, 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 da. I go, oh. And all of a sudden, I go, no, it's me. I'm guilty. And he goes, I know. I've known all along. Now let's do something. And I just got over it. I got over it. I quit trying to defend myself, trying to be secretive with God or anybody. Just, I'm guilty. I'm just guilty. I haven't done everything right. And suddenly there was a new, new freedom. So you can't get rid of something that you didn't do. And all of a sudden it was like, 
I'm not even trying to get rid of guilt. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm going to walk beyond it. I'm going to be it. Now what are you going to do with me? And basically he said everything. Now I can finally do something with you. We're not pretending anymore. So then you yourself, now you may feel guilt, and you may not, depends on what you did, but you may be feeling something. And the key now to freedom is start feeling guilty. I know nobody in the right mind is going to preach that in the pulpit today or ever. Start feeling guilty for what you have done and stop feeling guilty for what you haven't. And if you did it, feel guilty, get forgiven, right? Be forgiven as far as the east is from the west. Be forgiven and then be justified by your faith. And let's go on now. No defense, no worries, no nothing. Right? Don't have to worry about it. All of sin, so really everybody's guilty, just not everybody knows it. Right? And it's a wonderful place to be. I feel great about myself, guilty me. Because I am accepted. I'm loved. Amazing grace. No wonder it's so amazing. It's not so amazing if all of a sudden I go like, well, I'm not guilty. Thank you. He goes, no, you're, you're guilty, but I'm going to do all these things for you. <laughs> what did you do? I didn't do anything. Well, then it's not guilt. It's something. <laughs> I've had people over the years say, your preaching makes me feel guilty. <laughs> really? What sin did you do that this hit you so hard? <laughs> That'll stop them from saying it. Let's end, let me see what time it is, because, oh, it's time to end. So let's just think for a minute here. Let me see, I got nothing hardly. Uh, let me just stop, stop, some more healing. Stop, because why then, even with all this I'm saying, trying to help you, let's think for a minute. Why do people say, though, so often they make me feel guilty? What happens to me if you say to me, they make me feel guilty. My mother makes me feel guilty. John makes me feel guilty, you know, or the church makes me feel guilty. What happens to me when you say that to me? Saying someone makes you feel guilty insinuates, listen, because we just got a minute or two, insinuates that John has done something wrong. It doesn't say that you've done something wrong. That's why you feel guilty. It insinuates and I, that he or she, or, oh, uh, she, <laughs> that some, you say, my mother makes me feel guilty, tells me, oh, well, I bet your mother did something wrong. And I go, oh, you poor thing. You poor thing. Every time you get around your mother, you feel so guilty because your mother's a bad person. You poor thing. And so we use that line a lot because immediately people then begin to feel sorry for us. And we win their hearts. And we start thinking it insinuates that the other person did something wrong to deserve this verdict. You get what I'm saying? But if every time we say, my mother makes me feel guilty, and you say, really, what did you do? Nobody will do that anymore. Because we buy into it. Oh, you poor thing. And it just doesn't work. And chances are when you say that, you don't believe you did anything wrong. Most people think they didn't do anything wrong. So what you're feeling is not guilt. could be, like I said, sadness, regret, whatever. Maybe, maybe you're feeling people let you down. They just disappoint me and just let me down. You know what? That's a whole nother healing. Disappointment, being let down is not the same as guilt. Disappointment does not have the same power as guilt. guilt listen, guilt is powerful, but the blood is more powerful. We're dealing with guilt by blood. We're dealing with disappointment 
by compassion for other people. They disappointed me. Okay. Okay, but let's, under, let's have some compassion, understanding. We've dis, I've disappointed people. You know, it's a whole other battle when you say, well, I was disappointed with my child. My, my parents disappointed me. Okay. You don't have to pay for disappointment with blood. You get it? My Lord. Guilt. Guilt costs blood. For guilty people to no longer be condemned cost Jesus his life. We got to know the difference. When we say guilt, it better be guilt because it costs blood. If it's just feelings and, uh, you know, we're, maybe you're offended. Maybe you're, maybe you're holding a grudge. Well, then now you are guilty, but, <laughs> right? It's you. You're holding a grudge. You're offended or whatever. That's what you're really feeling, but we got to get to what it really is. Let me end then. Um, When I, when I was a new believer and, you know, through, uh, I still had people not believing that I was a believer because of my past. <laughs> so people were still trying to get me saved after I was saved. Here's a little unknown story. I don't think you mind me telling you. Do, do you any of you know, uh, he's in the prophetic movement and wrote, wrote a lot of books. You'll see him on Instagram and Facebook. Do you know the name Jim Gall? Anybody know Jim Gall? He's, he was from around here. I don't know where he lives now. A lot of people don't know this story about Jim Gall. Jim Gall was a Christian leader, so to speak, on the same campus as I was a lunatic uh, on campus. With long hair, and I was singing in bars, and I, you know, I was just a lunatic. Didn't know I was, but anyway, he was a Christian leading a group. I found this out years later, probably ten years after I got saved, that. Jim Gall came, J.D.'s probably heard this story, I guess, that Jim Gall, little did I know, was on campus when I was not saved. And he made it a point through his group to pray for me. They were praying for me on campus. And it was the old saying, said, you know, if we can get this guy saved, either, I don't know if he said God can do anything or a lot of people can get touched by it. But they targeted me on campus. I did not know that for 10 years after I was saved. And then when I did get saved, it was so unbelievable to so many people. I'm saved then, and then they'd still come up to me and say, are you saved? Are you saved? So now I knew enough to ask the question. they say, are you saved? And I said, from what? From what? What am I, what, what are you saved from? What are you saved from? And I'd look at their lives, and I'd already upset them. Tell me what you're saved from. You say, well, I'm saved. I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Okay, okay, okay. But what are you saved from today? What are you saved from today? Remember I told you, I'm going too long. Remember I told you the story where I was living and they, they knocked on my door and they wanted to try to get me saved. Like, I used to smoke back then, you know, and I entered the door, there was a cigarette hanging out of my mouth, you know. <laughs> you, know you know, are you saved? I'd look at what? They said, if you were to die today, do you know you would go to heaven? What are you talking about? You see this thing in my mouth? <laughs> it says on the side of this box, it's going to kill me. <laughs> Doesn't look like I'm really worried about where I'm going after I die. You got, it? and I said this earlier, I said, you got anything for me if I live? Completely stumped. Stumped. They had nothing for the living. And that's, that changed my life because if I'm going to do this, I'm going to learn to live it. And I've been preaching, and that's pretty much what I preach, right? You very seldom have the sweet by and by from me. It's all now. What are you saved from? I'm saved from all this. I'm forgiven. I'm justified by faith in the work of Jesus. Feelings are not going to control me. Guilt does not have a power over me. And one last little line that you can learn. Guilt does not come from other people. Guilt comes from you. So that's something you have, you deal with. You stand before the Lord. You can get rid of it. You can get rid of it. But you can't get rid of it if you're trying to get rid of it through somebody else. She makes me feel guilty. So what are you going to do? Get it? What? Guilt comes from somebody else. And once you learn that... 
then you can be free indeed. And I'm telling you, once I accepted it and tried to get rid of all the Christian stuff, you're not guilty, not guilty, and I walk away and say, but I still feel guilty. Well, then what am I going to do about it? You know what? What if I just accept it? I'll just be guilty and see what God does with me then. Because I know I did it. I know what I was. I'll just be guilty and see what he does. And he says, now I can do something with you. Because the blood, through the blood you're forgiven and have been set free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Let's stand up. Well, that's my story on guilt and my experience. I sure am glad you're here today. We're going to have a great time, but I do want to pray for you. Now, some of you heard a little bit of that before. But if you've been in church your whole life, you go like, eh, there's a few things there I haven't heard before. Something I need to chew on and think about. Because guilt is a power, you know. Jesus said money is a master. So we got to be concerned about how, how it is in our lives. But guilt is a lifelong power. And amazing when we don't let it run our lives. And we just accept it. And let him know that he's going to love us. And now we're going to be justified by faith. Not by trying somebody else to change. Like dear old mom. <laughs> let mom off the hook, huh? Sorry, mom. I just... <laughs> Can I pray for you? First, I'd like you to just accept who Jesus is right now. That You know, he's the Messiah of the world, of the universe. All things were created by Him and for Him. We are the creatures, but all creatures are by Him. And I accept Him to you as the creator of the world, the Messiah of the world, all of the universe. And He wants me to be part of it. Would you like to have Him just say, Dear Jesus, I want to be a part of Your kingdom. I believe you did die for my sin. And you can forgive me right now. And accept me for all that I am. This can be a new beginning. Justified by faith. I'm moving forward. I believe you're the Savior of the world. The only way to the Father. I want to live my life glorifying you. Filled with the Holy Spirit. You are the most important person in my life. I'm going to fix my eyes on Jesus, and I'm never going to change my mind. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these folks. I know what you've done for me. I know how I stood before you, Father, and finally became who I really am and felt so accepted, so loved. No more defenses. No more defending myself. No more explaining myself stood before you lord jesus stood before you lord jesus just as i am i stood before you and felt the love of god everybody here whatever you're dealing with but particularly today's the truth about guilt if you've been struggling with guilt struggling with guilt and you look you say what did, i don't know i must have done how about this one i must have done something wrong well what did you do wrong you can't think of it then let it go you can't think of it then you're not dealing with guilt maybe sadness remorse right disappointment you wish it hadn't turned out the way it did i'm sorry but don't let guilt get you you may have done nothing wrong or like all of us we've always done something wrong but not worthy of living a life of guilt now be justified in the name of jesus be justified let god say you know what it's time for you to go free 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 indeed let your faith say god is saying to me you're all right by my by in my book you're all right in my book you're in the book of life and you are all right by me righteousness is yours it doesn't matter we're all sin we've all been guilty but god takes us in by the blood of the lamb forgives us of our sins and allows every person to go forth and serve him there's not been one person that's ever done anything for jesus christ that wasn't guilty there's not one person that did anything for the kingdom of god that didn't start out as a guilty person 
right? Every single person needed the grace of God to do anything. It might as well be you. I'm praying that you accept that today, today, today. Don't let anything from your past get you. And don't, don't try to cover it up. All right, just lay it out there. It's all right. We all got one. We've all got a past. We've all got disappointments. We've all got things that nobody else knows about us. All right. Lay it out there. And be justified by your faith. The forgiveness of sin by the blood of the Lamb. He gave his blood so we could do this today. So we could do this today. And go forth justified. You're all right by me, says the Lord. In the name of Jesus.